to us about mechanized verification of graph manipulating programs. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> it is an honor to introduce our work on mechanized verification of graph manipulating programs. I'm Shen Yi Wang. This is a joint work with Ching Xiang Cao, Anshuman Mohan, and Aquinas Hober. We focus on verifying graph manipulating programs written in real C code with end-to-end -end machine checked correctness proofs. There are several difficulties about this task. First is that graph algorithms are hard to reason about, but they are widely used in many critical areas. The second difficulty is that the C program language is hard. It contains some subtle semantics in some places. As an end-to-end -end machine checked proof, we have to handle all those subtle semantics properly. The last difficulty comes from the machine checked proof themselves. They are merciless and lengthy, so we want to reuse the code. Our strategy is we, adopt, we use two large Cork libraries. One is the Concert, a certified C compiler, which can provide formal semantics of the C program language. The other is software, a verified software tool chain, VST for short, which provide a program logic based on the semantics of C uh, provided by Concert. With the help of these two large library, we can certify our graph manipulating code against uh, with strong specifications expressed with mathematical graphs. As we can see, um, Concert and the VST are large. They they call it they cost more than 50 percent years worth of development effort. So it is desirous to reuse the framework rather than reinventing the wheel by ourselves. So we made no changes to Concert. We add minimum additions to the VST library, uh, properly only one percent of it. And our whole work using vanilla separation logic, although we also use uh, the magic wand and the quantifier in some places. The major contribution is that our work is general and the our framework is general and powerful enough to verify various real code. Here is our workflow. From the lower left corner, we can see that starting from a C code, C program, the concert project will pass and simplify it into a cork file which is basically the AST of the C code. It can be composed, decomposed into several C commands. After that, when generated the cork file, the verified compiler will compile it into the assembly code. The whole concert project is verified, certified compiler because it keeps the semantics of C to the assembly code. Our work or contribution is the green part. According, uh, we prove a specification of a graph manipulating function by providing a precondition and the post condition. And we prove every uh, whole triple, P0, C1, P1, that interlocked them go through from P0 to the final post condition, P0. During the verification, we need we provide a mathematical graph library, which basically handle the graph theory part, like the set of uh, vertices, edges, reachability, labels, all such of things mathematically in any textbook about graph theory. And we also provide a spatial graph library, which handles the data structure uh, written in in C code are represented in, in the memory. We need to handle how, to, how, how it is uh, represented in the memory and how to read about the spatial part. The whole triple mechanism, something like that, is provided by the verified software tool chain. Our result is that we verified the six graph algorithms. Uh, one, one is graph visiting, 
graph reclamation, graph copy, two versions of union find, and our flagship uh, example is a garbage collector for the 30 cork project. It is a generational OCaml style garbage collector for a purely functional language, which is the cork language itself. And it contains uh, about around 400 lines of C code. And during the verification, we actually find two places where C is too weak to define an OCaml style GC. Here, too weak just means it's undefined behavior in standard C semantics. So from this sense that uh, an OCaml garbage collector is undefined uh, in, according to the standard C semantics. Here is the statistics of our development. You can see the major bulk of our work is the mathematical graph library which contains about 12,000 lines of proof script and def definitions. Uh, the spatial graph library is almost half of that. It contains uh, separation logic theorems and that, okay, mathematical graph library also provides uh, reachability theorems about that. And the other five examples are spread in certain files. Uh, takes uh, almost around uh, 3,000 lines of code. And the garbage collector, the verification, is another big example. We can see it's even larger than the mathematical graph library itself. It's spread into 18 files. You can see the math part, spatial part, function specification. And the whole development is about 43,000 lines of code definitions and the proof script contains. Now let's take an example to sh illustrate our methods, the union find algorithm. The problem is classic. There are a bunch of elements. They belong to different sets. These sets are disjoint. Now given any two row of elements, how to judge they belong to the same set or not? If they belong to different set, how to merge two sets efficiently. To solve this program, computer scientists invented very smart data structure and algorithms. The core part of this algorithm is the find function. The left part of this slide is the classical uh, C implementation of this one. And the right one show one set. Each dot represents an element. It contains a parent pointer to other nodes. So the find function took a, one element and it, it will find its parent, keep going recursively until it find a special one which does not point into any other point but only itself. Then it will find, it finds this is called the root of the, uh, the, the, the node. After that, it will redirect its parent. This is called path compression, which speed up the algorithm dramatically. So after that, it finds the final root and return it. So we can see the find function not just return the root, but also change the data structure. So how to specify the functional correctness of it? We treat it like a graph. Assuming we have a graph gamma, its memory representation is graph wrap gamma, and x is one row of it, one valid vertex of it. Then after the execution row find, it will change to gamma prime another graph, and the memory is the memory representation is graph wrap. And these two graphs are equivalent in some sense because they don't change the root actually. And the return value is really the root of the x. Now, there are several problems. How to define the mathematical graph gamma? How to define the spatial representation of the graphing memory? 
and how to define other predicates such as the graph equivalence and the root predicate, the root of x in gamma prime is written. We will solve in the following slides. First is the definition of mathematical graph. Here is our definition. Basically, it's from the standard textbook. V is a type row vertex, E is type row edges. Source and DST are two functions which return the source and the destination vertex row a certain edge. But during the verification, we find that it is important and necessary to specify partial graphs which lacks some part, represented by dashed lines and empty, uh, empty circle. So we add two predicates, V valid and E valid, to indicate the validity of its vertex and edges. Sometimes, graph algorithm need to handle the labels attached to the vertex and edges. So we define label the graph based on the definition of pre-graph. We provide the label function for vertex, label function for edge, label function for the global graph. LV, LE, LG are types of the lab labels. All these V, E, LV, LE, LG can be customized by users according to different concrete applications. This is not even, this is still not enough because for example, in our unified algorithm, this graph is very special. It contains one and only one auto edges for each node. So we, pr we define general graph based on the labeled graph. We put a soundness condition to contain all arbitrary complex, complex conditions we need for different applications. Now, with the definition of graph, we can define path. Uh, here is a typical path by red. And here is our definition. It contains two parts, a starting vertex and a linking edges list. With the definition of path, we can define reachability. This reads, vertex T is reachable from vertex S through the path P in graph gamma. This definition is actually uh, very intu intuitive. Valid path P, gamma P, just says that, okay, the source of the, the source of E0 must be the V0, and these edges must linked together for uh, the destination of E0 it must be the source of E1 and all the vertices and edges involved must be uh, satisfied V-valid. And of course, it's a, it's a path from S to T, so its source is T and the end of path must be uh, the T. Sometimes we only care about the reachability, we don't care about the concrete path, then it can be generalized as follows. Uh, S, uh, T is reachable from S in gamma. This is our architecture of the mathematical graph library. We can see that uh, it's based on three core definitions, pre-graph, label graph, and general graph. According to the definition, they are inherited. So their lemmas, the related lemmas, also inherited automatically. And for different applications, we need different soundness condition and property and property lemmas. And we summarize some common patterns of this property and the property lemmas. They can be uh, composed arbitrarily. Now, let's go to the spatial representation of graphs. Still take a graph unified as example. Uh, in memory, it must be like, look like this. The struct is just a two-field struct, and it contains pointers to each other. So it's natural to use the separation conjunction to give the representation of the graphs. Here, the big star is just the chain of separation conjunctions. It can be seen as a chain of vertex representations. For vertex representations, it's even easier. It just V maps to the label row of V. Here is a rank. And uh, off with an offset, it's pointing to its parent. 
And the parent uh, definition defined like this uh, is using the standard destination function and the only out edge defined in some this condition. Now, mm, to reason about complicated objects like graphs, we need some spe special uh, spatial inference rule. Here, uh, Hopper and Willett give a ramify rule to it. We want to verify, uh, to prove, uh, whole triple G1, C, G2. But now we only have a local effect that L1, C, L2. According to the frame rule of separation logic, it is easy to add arbitrary frame to it. Now this part holds automatically, but we also need to hold we also have, want to have the uh, Pentagon inference, G1 imply L, L1 star F, and L2 star F imply G2. And luckily, we have the following uh, rule. So we can choose F as L2 1 the G2. So now the right part holds L1 star L2 H1 G2 imply G2 automatically, and the, the left part is part of the pre-rules uh, we need to prove. And this side condition comes from the, frame, the side condition of frame rule. Uh, during the verification, we find that there are some restrictions about this side condition of the ramify rule. It cannot handle the standard treatment of locally modified variables uh, because of this. So we improved by providing proving the following the localized rule, which relax the side condition by adding an intermediate R. Also, another improvement of the localized rule is that it allows us to provide existential quantifier in uh, post conditions. The hard part is how to transit the local existential quantifier to the global one. Uh, we prove it we, as long as we have this one. So this we find very useful in our concrete uh, applications. Now let's go back to the specification of find. We have seen it before. And with all the preparations, we can define it. Graph wrap is already given. And the root is defined through reachability. Rat is reachable from x in gamma. And if the rat can go anywhere, it must be itself. Though this gives the definition of root. And the equivalence of the gamma 2 and gamma 1 is if the, the same vertex x has roots r1 and r2 in gamma 1 and gamma 2 respectively, they must be the same. Here is a proof skeleton of our find. We given the precondition, postcondition, and the key execution path. This is easy. This is easy too because we can use the specification. We just give UF equivalent. But this part is hard. This is a path compression. It's a redirection. So we can say, OK, gamma 2 is a redirection of the parent. But still, it's hard it's to read it directly. But if we zoom in, it's easy to provide this naturally. It's parent. It's become to P0. So this is L1. This is L2. This is G1. And this is G2. So we use the rule we just given. Another part is we need to convince that R gamma 2 is a gamma prime. So we need to prove this one. So this finished the whole thing. And we need to prove application of this. And our library provides convenient theorems about to handle things like this. And this is garbage collector. Uh, for the time of sake, I just mentioned it briefly. It contains 12, 12 generations. Things it's a for specific, for functional programming language, it's a functional mutator, no backward pointers. It uses standard Chinese algorithm, mark and copy collects. And once 
one generation is exceeds the bound, it will trigger off cascade for the collections, and it take two key functions. Here is the illust uh, a visualization of the proof of the garbage collector. Every single bound is a theorem. So you can see the 60% theorems are, are about the pre the, the pure graph theorem. And this is a graph isomorphism proof. This is a spatial proof. And these are proofs about concrete functions. And they use the fact in spatial and pure graph part. Although the number of theorem is very, uh, is very large here for GC graph, but it also, it only from consider the length of the theorem, uh, it only occupy one third of that. Uh, that's all, thank you. We have time for a few questions. <coughs> yeah, great work. So um, you mentioned that there are two undefined uh, uh, behaviors. Can you briefly mention what they are? Ah, yes. A look at the right corner. We provide additional slides for that. Okay. One is a double bounded pointer compression, which from start and from limit are in the same memory block. And we use to judge whether B in this memory range. If it's in, it's okay. It's right to have that. But if V is not, then this compression is undefined behavior in C standard semantics. Okay. Uh, another is a classical trick. It contains uh, conversions, uh, type conversions from pointer and uh, between pointer and uh, integers. Uh, it is hard. It is also undefined behavior in C standard. Uh, I think from pointer to integer is undefined behavior. So okay. that's it. So, so you your gar generation of garbage collector is uh, uh, manipulating a heap. Yes. As a C memory block, is that what you are doing? Or? Yes. It's each generation is provided a start and a limit space. Okay. To say, you know, different generation Got occupy it. different blocks. Yes. And yes. they double in each. And we collect one to two, two to three, accordingly. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. That uh, takes us to the end of the session. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thanks again to all the speakers. Okay. Thank you.